another short break and another poem. <laughs> Again, not mine. Um, there's something wrong with my computer and if anybody knows how to cure it, I'd be really happy to hear from you because um, my computer yesterday, it's a, it's a Macintosh, and I tried to install Microsoft Publisher on it because I need to make some new cards for my business. Well, what ended up happening was um, it took my entire office suite and hid it. And so I can't access any of my writing, and I can't even open a Word document to do any writing. <laughs> and I'm kind of frantic about it. Um, and I get this weird message every time I try. Anyway, uh, so if you know anything about Macintosh computers and Microsoft programs and how to make them compatible and work out, um, I ended up taking the publisher program back because it never installed on my computer. It wouldn't even open up to allow me to type in the, um, you know, product key or whatever. So I just ended up taking it back. And, but now I can't access any of my Word files, any of my writing. Ah! <laughs> mm. I know there's got to be a way to get back to where I can because... There's just got to be a way, but I I don't know how to do it. So if anybody knows how to do it, help! <laughs> um, anyway, I'm going to read from a very, very painful book. Um, this is Sharon Olds, and it's from her book, The Dead and the Living. And um, let's see, it was probably the first time I ever took a poetry class. I think I was 28, um, though I'd been writing you know, juvenile poetry all along up until then. Um, the teacher introduced me to a couple of different poets. Um, Lucille Clifton was one, and I'll probably do some Lucille Clifton just because she's so much fun. Um, but Lucille Clifton, Sharon Olds, uh, Swafford, or Stafford, William Stafford, um, I'm trying to remember who else he introduced. Anyway, those anyway. And um, and then you pick up and you start investigating poets on your own. And so anyway, but I never forgot about Sharon Olds. And the reason that I love her is she is so, at least in this book, so incredibly raw and painful. And um, this is really about... This is a poem probably that my kids may write about me <laughs> someday. I hope not. Um, I hope I've been a better mother than this, but I, I feel like five years ago um, things fell apart to the point where I just... I just haven't been able to be the kind of mother to them that I should have been. And um, so I'm going to read this poem and I'm going to acknowledge to my kids that that I, you know, I have let them down. Um, and I'm not going to go into the whole story about that, but um, it is a painful one. Anyway, Burn Center. When my mother talks about the Burn Center she's given to the local hospital, my hair lifts and wavers like smoke in the air around my head. She speaks of the beds in her name, the suspension baths and the square miles of lint, and I think of the years with her as a child, as if without skin, walking around scalded raw, first degree burns over 90% of my body. I would stick to doorways I tried to walk through, stick to chairs as I tried to rise, pieces of my flesh tearing off easily as well-done pork, and no one gave me a strip of gauze or a pat of butter to melt on my crackling side. But when I would cry out, she would hold me to her hot griddle. When my scorched head stank, she would draw me deeper into the burning room of her life. So when she talks about her burn center, I think of a child who will come there, float in water murky as tears, dangle suspended in a tub of ointment, suck ice while they put out all the tiny subsidiary flames in her hair near the brain, 
and I say let her sleep as long as it takes. Let her walk out without a scar, without a single mark, to honor the power of fire.